All right, so welcome, welcome. Um, we got a couple people joining us here live. We got a couple people joining us on the interweb. And uh, we are going to start today. Um, well, here, tell you what, before we start, here's last week's project. Last week's project was uh, that we just that we finished was um, was this guy right here. So it's our my throwing gauge. So I made three of them, and uh, they're 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 all in the pottery area here at the makerspace now. I made little excuse me knobs that we didn't make in class, but you guys can figure out how to make a knob, I'm sure. Um, but otherwise, oh, all our laser cut parts ready to go. And this week. Uh, we are going to make a part like this. So this is a part for a game. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the YouTube channel Make Anything, but this YouTube channel Make Anything here, uh, this guy Devin Montez, I want to say his name is Devin, pretty sure his name is Devin. Anyway, uh, great maker, worth a subscribe, but he made this game called Tippy Tree. And the idea is, that, uh, like a couple of people pointed out that I didn't think of, is it's kind of like reverse Jenga. So you start with the tree structure, and then you kind of take turns adding these parts, these leaves, on the side of it. Uh, and I thought it was a pretty cool little part that he makes. It prints without support material, uh, just sitting on the bed here like this, which I thought was kind of nice. Uh, so I printed up a bunch of them, and, and I've got them here uh, at the Makerspace. But I thought that this would be a fun way for us to design some new uh, Tippy Tree parts. In fact, uh, we're making a version of this I'm calling Tippy Trash. So instead of a tree trunk, I made a little trash can. And uh, we're going to make up des and design some of these little parts. Uh, throughout the process, we'll learn uh, and go over the parameters area here. So these are most of this model is made with this user parameter that, that I called standard here. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll dive in and You'll, you'll see how it's done. So I'm going to start a new document. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my new tab plus icon up here at the top in Fusion. And I'm going to start right off by, by making uh, a couple of, or maybe just one, user parameter. So I'm going to come down here to my, my Modify menu and then scroll all the way down to change parameters. So normally in Fusion, when we start drawing something, we, we type in some dimensions. But you can also kind of specify some dimensions before you even start drawing something. Or I guess after you start drawing something, you can come back and specify some special parameters. So if I hit the little plus button next to this user parameters, um, tab there, I suppose you could say. We get our little user parameter window. And now I can give a parameter a name. So this is going to be, I called it standard. Um, I guess unit would also be a, a fine thing. Uh, and the unit that we're going to use here, well, whenever we type in unit, we want to be 0.5 inches. So whenever we type in the word unit, it's going to give us this uh, half an inch expression. So let me kind of show you how that works in practice. So I'm going to hit OK here, and we can see our user parameter. Oh, so in the Modify menu, we come down here to Change Parameters. And then this Change Parameters, you hit this little plus icon right here. And that plus icon gets you this add user parameter window. Were you able to? Okay, okay. Got it? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and then we, we entered a, a name. Uh, you can call it whatever you want to. I called mine unit. And the first one, I called it like a standard, because this is going to be like a standard dimension that we just reference over and over again. 
and then uh, we're using a unit of inches and then the expression is going to be the numerical value that you want to be entered so every time we every time I type the word unit I'll get a, numer a numerical value of 0.5 inches All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now if I create a sketch, so I'll click on Create and then Create Sketch. And I'm going to specify the front as a drawing surface this time around, so one of the, one of the sides, not the top like I usually do. And on this sketch, I can create a rectangle, a two-point rectangle to be specific. And I'm going to go ahead and start that two-point rectangle right at my origin here and just move my mouse out. And now here's where we can use that user parameter. So in uh, up in my in my y-axis, I guess this is, uh, I can just start typing in unit and I get oh, unit and then hit enter and then it gives me that that unit there that we specified so that that's a 0.5 inch now height and if I hit the tab key something I can do down also is do some math so I can type in unit and then I can say uh, times uh, which is like the little asterisk above the 8 key. Unit times, I think it's 7. So unit times 7. And then I'll hit enter again. Um, and now I can do that again. I'm going to draw one more rectangle. Um, actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, let's do this. Let's take my this first measurement here, so you can see how we, we're using this user parameter to um, give our sketch dimension, right? So instead of 0.5, or instead of a single unit high, I could make this a double unit high. So it could be unit times two. So now we get a two height by seven, so it's like a two by seven basically. Now, if I want to, I can draw a line right down the middle here. So, uh, for example, I'm going to draw this line purposefully. I, I do want it to be right in the middle, but I don't want to constrain it to the middle here. So, uh, I'm going to draw mine purposefully in the wrong place. As long as it's parallel, on per perpendicular on both sides. And now, I can zoom in here and now I'm going to give it a specify a dimension. So I'm going to give a dimension between this line and this line and lock it into position like that. So I can come up here to my create menu and then choose this sketch dimension option. And now I can dimension the top, this middle line, or what will be the middle line, from our bottom line here. And there again, uh, this is going to be a, a popular theme from, from this class here. I can type in, start typing U, or whatever you specified as your user parameter that we were working with here. And now I've got, now I've got this, this height specified here, right? So this is part of our, our sketch done already. And from here, I, I kind of want to encourage a little bit of creative freedom. So um, in the part, in the kind of original part, there's a, a couple more squares. So uh, I'm going to make another rectangle. And maybe we should all just do it exactly like this. And then you can uh, venture off from there. So uh, I'm going to grab my two-point rectangle tool. I'm going to click to place the first point of my rectangle somewhere on that line down here. 
and then I'm going to come up to my upper line here and now my dimensions for this are going to be unit oh, and it's very important you gotta type in enter when you're using a user specified or user parameter uh, I started typing in U and then I go to the other one and, and you see it doesn't keep that as the user parameter that I specified there so I just made another square down here and I can position this square away from the edge here using the same method that I used over here so I can give a sketch dimension so I click on create and then I come down to sketch dimension and I can dimension say this line away from this line over here so our far left line from our line that we just made on our on our rectangle there and I can give that a dimension of unit and almost everything on this sketch or everything on this sketch will be a variation of that unit so it'll be one unit two unit three unit you get the idea now I'm gonna do that yeah go ahead Oh, let me come and take a look. Yeah, so we've got a couple of, let's see, we've got, so that's two units. Well, no, because it won't, it won't accept it. And by tab over, it won't try, let me tab. Try deleting it, writing it again. Okay. and nothing. Something weird happened when you yeah. Yep. Try to do that last one one more time. Can you have two rectangles overlapping each other here? Well, here, let's... Yeah. Okay, start from nothing. the unit, hit enter, and it just... Is that what your user parameter is called? When you click on modify and then say change parameters? No, you don't have to. You don't oh. have a parameter. I did. Okay, unit. Inches, expression, multiply, all. Enter. Okay. So now try... So now let's now you should be able to just double click on that. Now when I you go back, I want to make sure that I'm clean here. Geez, your user parameter still exists though. No. So it must maybe when you undo, you undid that that user parameter there. Okay. Two. That'll work. Five. Oh, no. Or 
77. All right. Now, do I tap over or do I hit? Yeah, now you can hit, you can hit tab. Tab. Yeah. And just unit and enter. Well, it, it disappeared. There's nothing. No, it says unit. Oh, yeah. So try to do unit by two. Do a two, two, two by two by seven. I didn't hit enter often enough. Okay. Unit by seven. Tab. Unit by two. Cool. There we go. Okay, and then unit by one in yeah. the corner. Exactly. Yeah. So then I made a Yeah, I made a rectangle. Uh right. In right down in this bottom section here, so another uh, two-point rectangle is what I made here, and I just made it down somewhere here close to this bottom section, and I made this uh, also one unit, so basically a one by one, and you know it's interesting. You can't just hit tab; you really got to hit enter. So when you start. I start typing in unit, I want UN, and now those letters are red. If I want to lock in this user parameter here of unit, I have to hit enter, and then I hit the tab to bounce over to my other measurement here. And again, my, my text is red, and then I hit enter, and it locks in that unit, uh, that user parameter there. So we got some extra entering that we have to do. And then to get this square that we just made uh, exactly one unit over from our, uh, from our edge here, we can give that a dimension. So in my Create menu, I just have to come down here to Sketch Dimension. And now I can click on this uh, edge of my square and then secondarily click on the side of my little 2x7 here. And now I can place this dimension. I can place this anywhere. I can place it off to the side. But I'm going to place it right down here at the bottom. And now I can change that dimension to our unit. So now that is exactly one unit over, and that's a little one by one square there. Now I want to do the same thing, just with a larger square uh, rectangle over near the top here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my Create, and then Rectangle, and then Two Point Rectangle. Yes or no? No. Okay. So I'm going to make one more two-point rectangle over on the top section here. So this rectangle is going to be uh, one unit tall. And I believe it's going to be, so I'm going to start typing in unit, and it's going to be three, yeah, three wide. And then the same way we specified this dimension here, specifying a dimension between this line and this line, we're going to do that up here between the edge of our, this new rectangle we made and the far right side of our, of our piece here. So I'm going to grab my sketch dimension tool again. So I'll click on this sketch dimension option. And then I'm going to specify this edge of my one by three rectangle and the side of my two by seven rectangle here. And then I have this dimension that I can place up here at the top. And this is going to be unit. So it's going to be a single unit over. Let me just kind of move some of my dimensions here. 
Well, you guys take a look at this and see if you. Do you guys have any questions at home so far? How, how are you guys doing at home? Cool, following along? Yeah, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, definitely. So the in the modify menu here, if we scroll down, there's this change parameters option. Um, now I'll mention like this menu looks different if you're in if you're editing a sketch versus if you're um, not editing a sketch. So here we have our sketch tools. We've got our change user parameters that ends up at the bottom of this menu. If you're not editing a sketch that option is still in your modify menu except there's a lot more stuff here in the modify menu and it's not quite all the way at the bottom it's the second it's the penultimate option in uh, in the modify menu when you're not editing a sketch but then you have this um, this window that pops up and to, to enter a user parameter you just have to hit this little plus button and then you can give that user parameter a name and then a unit of, of measurement, so freedom units in our case, and then an expression. And this expression is the uh, numerical dimension or the numerical expression that you want to have called when you type this, whatever name you type in up here. So we could put like X or just Z or something like that. Yeah, you could type in X, you could type in, uh, you know, Tom's amazing measurement um, best measurement ever or uh, you, you know since we're drawing in freedom units you could just type America with an M and uh, yeah so what, whatever you want to type there is good I mean it's a it's gonna be something you need to remember so whatever is easier for you to remember um, you know great all right, so we've got our sketch all dimensioned and, and drawn out here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Finish Sketch. I've got a sketch that I can name here. So this is our, uh, I guess this is a 2, well right now it's 2 by 7, but it could be anything. It's, a, it's just a part. Nothing more, nothing less. I mean, I guess in our game this is trash. So... Some things that I make here at the Makerspace are trash anyway. Uh, it's nice to make things that are purposefully trash. And I gotta actually share my screen. All right, so so we've got our, our part here, and now we can start extruding stuff. Okay. Yay! Uh, yeah. Mine is yours gray, and mine is blue when I go to any of the surfaces. Well, mine it looks blue right now. It's just gray around the screen. Okay. Yeah, I think that's just a screen thing. As long as they, they highlight when you hover over them, yes. uh, that is the key there. And here we get an extra line on the screen because there's a shadow being cast. But um, All right, so now if I view this from a little bit... Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was trying to play with the shadow. Okay. <laughs> We've got shadow puppets here in class. That's what you guys are missing out on at home is the shadow puppets. Nothing else, just the shadow puppets. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and click on my extrude option here. And I'm going to extrude, uh, I guess, a weird shape here. So I'm going to extrude all of these bits right here. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. And uh, I'm going to give you a guess of the amount that we're going to extrude this. Anybody want to wager a guess? One unit. A one unit. Yeah, it's just going to be a unit. So we just, although, you know, like maybe later we'll make a two unit one. That'll be fun. All right, so we're just going to extrude this one unit. And then I'm going to say, okay. Now I'm going to do that again. Um, and, you know, if you want to, we we could do we could do that the exact same way we did from this side here. Um, but kind of a, a pro tip here, 
uh, you know you can extrude any surface so because we want to extrude kind of the same shape again if I spin over to the other side of my shape and I grab my extrude tool instead of clicking on those three various areas that I used to click on the first time I can spin around to the other side of my shape and then I can click on that whole surface as one. And we're also going to extrude this again, a dimension uh, distance of a unit. However, we're going to change our start plane here. So where we start making that extrusion in our extrude window, we're going to change that from the profile plane to an offset. So we're going to extrude this offset by, drum roll, a unit. <laughs> 80 units. Now just a single unit. So then we're going to, so what we do is we, we end up with a shape like, like that right there. All right. And if I hit OK, now it's saying join, but really it's just going to make a new body. Um, it's interesting to me that this is, that this operation here is defaulting to join when really it's like, obviously these things aren't touching. Uh, I would imagine that this would have changed itself automatically to new body, but when we say OK, it is indeed making a second body here. So. So now we have two bodies that are um, the exact same thing. And now we can do our very last extrusion that we need to do here. And that last extrusion, so if I grab my Create menu and I choose Extrude, that last extrusion is going to be this square down here and this square up here and this is going to be a distance of uh, I guess technically you only need to go two units but I'm gonna say uh, my unit times three and make sure I go all the way across there and instead of cutting I'm going to change this operation to join. So here indeed I do want to join and, and make these all, both of these bodies into all one right. shape, like a transformer. Our bodies combine, make one, join. All right, cool. So, so there's kind of the, the basic shape that we have going on here. This is kind of the, the basic tippy tree shape. Um, and the reason I like this method for drawing the shape now is now we can kind of imagine other kinds of, uh, other kinds of shapes that we could draw here. So if I go back to my sketch that I made, well, first of all, uh, the user parameter, I could open up my user parameters and say, Hey, this isn't a 0.5 inches anymore. My my unit is now going to be an inch, and we just change that, and now it it goes ahead and, and makes that a, a much bigger shape. I guess you can't really tell that it's bigger because it's the exact same because it's all digital. But uh, trust me, it got bigger. Um, I am going to change that back to 0.5 inches though. All right. We could also change things about our sketch and and this is kind of the interesting thing about making iterations on this trash part um, that I'd like you guys to explore here so the, here's my sketch and I could change I could change this instead of um, three units I could make this just a, a single unit and down here at the bottom, instead of seven units, I could make this five. And now you can see it, it changed our shape pretty drastically. 
But I say finish sketch, and it, it goes ahead and it does all the extrudes just right for me. Um, so it's cool to be able to make different shapes with the same, just by changing a couple of uh, dimensions here. Um, in this same method, you know, this could be uh, nine. And I could have a really weird, you know, real weird long shape here. So trash comes in all shapes and sizes. Um, so you can kind of explore the various shapes that you can create just by changing things about that sketch. So I kind of, oh. So I'll go back to making this a unit times three because I think that's nice like that. And then a unit times seven, go back to kind of the standard measurement there, I guess you could say. Uh, maybe I'll make this a two and maybe I'll change this to a two. I haven't done that shape before. So that's kind of the same basic length, it's just we got two 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 by two openings, which is kind of nice. Alright, so if I say finish. So there, there's our shape here now. So something I discovered, and um, you may know, you may have guessed already, is if you have two shapes like this, so if I, the distance here between our little gap here is, is 0.5 inches. If I want to take something that is a half an inch and put it in there and inspect these pieces to fit together, they will probably not. Um, because you need to have some sort of uh, tolerance when you're expecting parts to fit together, right? Something that's half an inch isn't necessarily going to fit exactly inside of a half inch opening, which is kind of counterintuitive. Um, and that is my favorite. That is the reason I use user parameters the most. So in this modify menu, let me bring you guys back to that change user parameters option here. And the thing that I find myself doing uh, the most often when I'm using these user parameters is I enter a user parameter for my tolerance. Uh, sometimes I'll just call it tolerant, tol, or, and can't spell for crap. Um, and I know from my testing that uh, tolerance of 0 0.015 freedom units uh, gives us something that, that fits together in, on my 3D printer. Uh, how, it may be different on, on your 3D printer, but uh, on my printer, a, a 0 0.015 inch tolerance gave me a nice fitting part. And, you know, the nice thing about doing this with the user parameter is uh, I can say OK here. And now I can start using this as a tolerance. And if that tolerance turns out to be different or I, I get a little bit too much slop, I can just come here, open up my user parameters and change that tolerance and print it again. I don't have to do a whole lot of messing around here. So I'm just going to go ahead and say OK on that tolerance user parameter. And now I can apply it to a few areas where there will be um, parts that need to slide in here. So if I grab my extrude tool and anywhere I have two faces where I want to be able to fit another part in there. So between, between this face and these two faces, I want to have my tolerance on both sides of that. So in if I grab my extrude tool and I choose both of these two faces I'll start with and then because I'm going backwards here I'm doing a negative tolerance negative I gotta use a capital T and you can see there that it's cutting into my shape there that tolerance mount I can do the same thing to the other side over here. So I'll go ahead and grab my extrude tool. And I'll do a negative tolerance there. I 
I need to do that a couple other places. So over on the opposite side of my of my shape here, mine is uh, is now kind of symmetric. So it may be difficult to see, but this is indeed two more sides here. So I'll go ahead and do my negative tolerance here, and then over on this other side over here. Those two faces, I'll do a negative tolerance there. And then the final places I need to do that tolerance is between these two bits, because I want to be able to slide pieces in between these two faces here. So I'm going to add my tolerance there as well. So I'll go ahead and click on extrude, and then negative tolerance there and again on the other side here extrude negative tolerance there as well all right so now what's nice is if we go and print this and we say oh that those pieces are just a little bit too sloppy they're they they're a little bit too loose together. Then all I had to do, and I did this a couple of times as I printed these pieces for, for us here that I brought into class here today, is uh, just change this user parameter. So maybe I go, oh, point, point 0.15 is too much. How about point zero 0.01? And then just changing that one, that one expression goes ahead and, and makes the adjustment on all those extrudes that we made. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Is that extrude a cut or join or a new body? I'm it is a cut. yeah. It is a cut. Those those all those for me were cuts. Um, and like negative and positive is is always kind of a mystery thing here. So mine were negative, a negative tolerance. Uh, it it could be I guess somehow you could have had to do a positive tolerance to cut into your shape. But uh, you kind of just have to look at it as you're extruding it. So if I go back to edit feature here and say, and make sure that it's, my arrow is pointing into my part, that's a good sign. And then my color here is, uh, of my part is red. And, and I can even see here the objects that I'm choosing to cut here. So this is useful if you're, if you want to, if you want to cut one body with an extrusion, but you don't want to cut into another body with an extrusion, so uh, options there for you. All right. The last thing that I want to do to this part is to add a crap ton of chamfers. Why? Because I think they look cool. And more important than the functionality of something is how cool it is. Fact. All right, so... Uh, li literally, I'm just going to go ahead and, and grab my chamfer tool from my modify menu here. And uh, I'm going to click on every edge that faces outward. Because I want every outward edge to have a chamfer. I do not want my internal corners to have chamfers. Because um, I think that'll affect the way the parts fit together. Like if I have a chamfer in here, uh, that might affect the way a part fits inside of this little uh, this little nook here. And and I don't want to hinder um, parts fitting together. So I'm choosing to only make chamfers on my outside edges. And uh, th this is tedious and requires a lot of clicking and at some point things get very difficult to look at uh, because you've got so much so many highlighted edges um, I find my I think the best way to handle it is to, oh no uh, is to kind of spin around a little bit and you can see here I got a this edge in between here, this is technically an outside edge, even this, even though this is an inside edge. So I am going to click on that a little bit, and that's an outside edge. 
all of these guys that guy so there's a crap load of edges and depending on like the actual shape that you have um, if you modified your sketch at all you, you will have more or less edges than I have there's another edge hiding in there chances are you you will have missed something and that's totally okay because you can always go back and add more like here there's an edge down here yeah Mike go ahead uh, isn't just a thought if you select the whole thing there are 68 edges isn't it easier just to deselect a few rather than selecting a metric shit ton? you know it it might be so I think what what Mike is suggesting here is to um, instead of choosing all those, I'm going to go ahead and, and zoom out and, and Mike, did you do something here where you like yeah, box selected yeah, the whole thing? Like so here now you, you got to unselect the faces. So, uh, this face, if I just select this face, it will chamfer, um, like if, if this face is selected and I say, uh, give it a dimension here. And you know, here's an here's another excuse to use that user parameter that we set. If I give this a dimension of tolerance, then, or, or we can make a new user parameter for chamfer if we wanted to. Um, but so it'll it'll select all of the edges around that face, and so that means it's going to select this inside edge here, um, and I don't want that inside edge selected, so. So if you're going to do that method, you will also have to deselect the faces. Um, so all of these, I suppose that face can be selected. But you'll have to make sure that you unselect those inside edge faces as well as those inside edges. But that's certainly... Uh, an option for you. Uh, yeah, and here are these faces I'm going to unselect. And I actually have to unselect, I think I have to unselect this face here too because I don't want to chamfer here. And I have to unselect that face there. So either way, uh, so, you, you play so, the game. Uh, we, yeah. The, the chamfer, we don't want to put a chamfer in a place that's going to add material, right? Is that what we're doing? Right. That is a great way of putting it, Nick, is we don't want to put a chamfer in a place where it'll, where it'll make the part thicker. So, and my kind of go-to is any of these inside corners, they would, when they chamfer, they would expand into the part and, uh, and add material to the part and, and my fear was that it would affect the fitting of the parts together um, so either way you, you skin this cat there there is uh, as you put Mike a metric fuck ton of uh, clicking that you that you have to do here um, and now I can type in a dimension here like uh, 0 0.05 that's probably too much 0.03 and I'll say okay and then so you can see we got a chamfer here but we didn't chamfer this where we would add material um, yeah so, so this is our part, and, and we got 15 minutes left. So what, what my thought was is, is I would encourage you guys, let's go back to let's go back to that sketch and see if you can make a modification to the shape. And, and you know see what you kind of come up with. Uh, my hope is that we'll have many different types of trash shapes that will be part of our tippy trash game here at the makerspace. Um, so here's the one I made that's only slightly different, but maybe I'll make uh, one more. And if we go back to our sketch and, and choose to edit this sketch, 
change these dimensions around. Um, you know, instead of making this uh, two units high, you can make this three units high. Or you could make a, a weird shape that was like a, a one unit high in height, but maybe it's three units in, in width. So you could change the extrude width. Um, with the last like 10 to 15 minutes of class, go ahead and, and do that. Experiment at home. Uh, experiment here. Uh, let me, I'll walk around a minute and come and look over people's shoulders. And then uh, at the end of class here today, maybe uh, we'll, we'll, if anybody wants to share their, their shape, you can share your shape. Um, something that you may notice as you're changing changing shapes around uh, is like for example if I change this to if I change that to nine and change this to four um, and say finish sketch in this case it did not affect my chamfers however there there could be cases where you change something about your sketch and then you come back to your your three-dimensional object you may say oh um some of my chamfers are gone you may have to go and add back in some chamfers um because it doesn't recognize edges as being the same as the edges as they were before but uh you can cross that bridge when you get there i suppose all right so i'll walk around here let me know if you have questions at home And then maybe I'll leave it on, I guess, what, what should I leave it on for, for the stream? I'll take you guys off. Okay. All right, cool. All experiment with our with our extrusions too so something that that we could do here instead of changing our uh, changing that first then what is it the second extrude we made yeah so if I change our second extrude and if I make that offset different I can make the offset two units instead of instead of one unit and then we got a, a wider piece here that's kind of interesting we tried making a taller one and it didn't really um, the hole that we made in the top half didn't move with the uh the rest of the sketch so you made like a three unit tall one yeah like that oh mine did not do that i put my little block so I think maybe it could be a different. So I made I made a single rectangle when we started off. I made a single rectangle and then I divided it with a line. And now that that's a different method of drawing versus if you were to make uh, a, a one unit tall rectangle and then make another one unit tall rectangle on top of that. Yeah, I did the first method. Okay, right on. Maybe I'll come and peek and see what see what see what you're coming up. So when you started your rectangle, you started it by placing it on, on that line there. And um, my guess is if you would have started it by clicking on that line there, then it would always be 
be constrained to that line. I thought okay. you could delete a coincidence okay. constraint. Yes, thank you. Um, my, my sketch does not have any coincident constraints, mysteriously. So we have somebody here who, who's moving things around and, and they're finding their rectangles aren't moving with the lines that they expected them to move. Yeah. So instead of instead of drawing your rectangle like this, if you draw your rectangle like this, um, you know, because I guess in theory you're you, you've got a a constraint that's always locking it to that line. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I thought, I mean, any of these little constraints here, I can click on, and and I can delete them, and then I can. Have it ignore, uh, ignore what's going on there. Uh, I suppose the other option would be we could try adding a coincident constraint. So, if I can, I add a coincident constraint to that line to always be there. It's really not not adding it because it's already applied to the selected sketch object. So I've got coincident constraints that are not visible for some reason. But at any rate, so now I can change this to I can make that two units there. Same thing here. Of course, that's going to move up in a weird way. There we go. Now I make a made that kind of weird shape. Just have to change my extrude. Except I want to change the first extrude, now my second extrude. My chambers are are sticking around, but uh, sometimes it's confusing which which extrude you want to edit. Does anybody at home want to share their their part so far? Nick or Tom, you want to share your part? Not so much. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. Cool. That's some fine looking trash, sir. Some fine looking trash. Excellent. All right. Cool. So so we're rolling up on on eight o'clock here. Um, that's kind of our, our project for, for the day. Uh, part of this is like having a one, having a one class project is I needed another week to prepare for the project that we're going to start next week. Uh, and the project that we are going to start next week is old timey looking radio thing. So, uh, I, I really like the look of old style radios. Uh, so I want to. I want us to design a modern looking old timey radio. Uh, I've been experimenting with bent plywood shapes to get like curved forms going on. And uh, so we're going to design an old timey radio. We can stick like a raspberry Pi in the inside of or a little Bluetooth thing and make a little Bluetooth radio out of it. Uh, Bluetooth stuff on Amazon is real cheap right now. So if you want to make your own Bluetooth speaker, it's super easy to do and reasonable. Uh, and there's a ton of speakers at the other makerspace, so 
There's lots of materials to use. So next week, we're going to start Old Timey Radio Project. And until then, uh, I'm around. My email address is up on YouTube now, so you can email me or uh, find me here at the Makerspace uh, and yell at me when I'm at the Pottery Wheel because that's where I usually hang out here. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Carl. Thank you, sir. Yeah, for sure, guys.